How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and welcome to my video game pickups for the month of January 2020. I got a whole lot more this month than I was planning to, so... Uh, frankly, I don't even know where to start. Man. Uh... Going left to right, I guess, makes... Uh, that, or right to left, I guess, in your case, viewer, makes, uh, sense because that's what I've done in the past, but some of these I really need to explain with, uh, I don't even know where to start. I'll start here. Okay, we got two new Amiibo. We got two new Amiibo this month, and they were the final Smash Amiibo, and to date, the final Amiibo to ever be announced and released. So we got Richter Belmont and Dark Samus. And like I said, with the release of these two Amiibo, every Amiibo that's ever been announced to come out is now released. And I have every single one. Made a video about it if you haven't seen that. So, yay! Uh, Amiibo is finished! <laughs> um, with the little asterisk, they might make Amiibo for all the DLC fighters. So Joker, Hero, Banjo, uh, Terry, and Byleth. I think everyone's expecting for them to make Amiibo based off of those, and of course the uh, six fighters in Fighter Pass 2, but until they do, Amiibo is done, and I was able to stay on top of it all, and I have every single one, and I'm super happy. Uh, let's go ahead and show this off here. Um, so, I got two Atari 2600 games for the first time in forever. That feels a little loose. Anyway, so the two that I got are Asteroids and Missile Command, and I'm a little annoyed actually because turns out I already had Missile Command. I, I, I swear I looked at my shelf and I didn't see it, and I really wanted Missile Command. And I went to eBay and tried to search for eBay lots uh, for Missile Command because this by itself is a lot of uh, pretty expensive. Buying Atari games by themselves is a lot more expensive than it's worth usually. So what you want to do is if you're, look if you're looking for a certain game, you look for a lot of games. And I found a lot with these two games for a really good price. And these are classic arcade games. Luckily, I didn't have Asteroids, so that's a great game for me to uh, add to my collection and play. Oh man. Oh man, just... Most of you probably have heard of these two games. They are classic arcade games, and the Atari 2600 ports of them are amazing. Super happy to have these in my collection. Unfortunately, like I said, that's my second Missile Command, but what can you do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and show this off. So I got some fan art. Uh, I probably should have shown this off in the first place, um, but here we go. So we got this amazing fan art by uh, a fan of mine named NJD Customs. So thank you so much for this this beautiful poster. We got Zippy there, we got my droid R2B1, we got Alex, and then Fishy at the very bottom saying, Port Mackerel! And it's just a beautiful fan art. I, it's been a long time since I've gotten fan mail, so thank you so much NJD for that. Um, it's just amazing and I'll keep it forever. And I also got uh, something special from The Intastic. Uh, my good friend. Uh, he did this for me last year, too. Around Christmas time, he sent me an email saying, Hey, can I send you something? And I said, sure. He did that again this Christmas. So, he sent me this amazing poster of uh, various things around his channel that he's most well known for. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, just This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of art that he decided to gift me for Christmas. But since they celebrate Christmas in Canada in January or something, it just got here this month. And also went flying, but it, we got this little button as well. This awesome uh, button with his channel logo on it. So thanks so much, VN, for sending me all this. I got to get that poster framed and put it somewhere in my room. That That's that's really amazing, and I feel so fortunate that you felt the uh, desire to send me that. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, guess I'll go ahead and show these off. I got some Pokemon games. <laughs> kind of. Um, so I've been mentioning this off and on for a few years. My ultimate goal for Pokemon is to get every single game complete in box, including spin-offs. And I've been slowly chipping away at the main series. In fact, you might see on my wall over here, I've created this new rack. Uh, I, I built this this month, actually. This is a, uh, a custom-made bookshelf, kind of a book. It's a shelving unit, anyway, where I can display all of my Pokemon games, Generation 1 through Ultra Sun and Moon. And, uh... Thanks to these games that I bought this month, I actually am down to only six games, five games or six games, that I'm missing total 
for the main series. Um, so I need to uh, clarify what I define as complete inbox. That means, for example, for Pokemon Gold, it is the box that the game came in, okay? Uh, the game itself, and everything inside that the game originally came with. So, that means the game, the, uh, white box to hold the game, and all of the inserts, not just the player's guide, but also the caution and warning, the, uh, Hey You Pikachu promo, and the offer for Nintendo Power, in the case of Pokemon Gold. So it's it's been really a really long process to try and get all these games complete in box. Um, I have all of the games loose, and that has helped a little because in the case of the next two games, I actually uh, found listings that were complete with everything except for the game. So since I already had the game, I didn't need to worry about um, about finding one uh, a listing on eBay that was fully complete, just one that was complete except for the game. Those go for like half the price sometimes. So anyway, gold I did need to buy all over again with the game because uh, actually the the good copy I put on my shelf to be able to use. This is my old copy of gold, which is uh, one of the oldest Pokemon games that I have in my possession, actually, that I've owned the longest. Uh, this particular cartridge I bought in 2016, and um, it's broken. <laughs> Somebody uh, was trying to replace the battery in this, and they did such a terrible job that the PCB is just completely scorched. It plays fine, but there's no way to, to save the game, and um, it's impossible to properly replace the battery. So I decided to have a more usable copy of Gold. I would just buy a brand new copy, or, or a complete in-box copy with a new copy of the game, or, or a copy with a battery that was usable, which I have. So now my old one is in here, so I... Yeah, I, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so that's gold. I also picked up Sapphire, and this is one that I, uh, like I mentioned, it was complete except for the game was not included, and that's perfectly okay. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I thought that these uh, these half circles on the eBay picture, I thought that was just uh, tape that I'd be able to peel off. No, that's just the raw um, box underneath the uh, Pokemon Sapphire label. So, someday I'm going to want to get a better box for Sapphire, but oh well, I now have Sapphire complete in box, and same with Pokemon Emerald. So, another one of those where I just bought the box and everything in it, not needing to buy the game. And thanks to those three Pokemon games, I'm down to, like I said, only five or six games that I'm missing. I'm missing Red, Yellow, Silver, Ruby, Leaf Green, I think that's it, so only five games. Uh, for the main series, anyway, then I need to work on the spin-offs, but in any case, three complete in box copies of Pokemon games is more than I have bought in any month prior to now. Very happy to have them, and I took way too long to talk about that, so let's move on. So I got a PlayStation 3 for Christmas, and I decided that there was a PlayStation 3 game that I wanted to play, that I didn't currently own, so I decided to go out and buy it. And that was Final Fantasy XIII. And I played this for about two hours now. It's incredibly linear, incredibly easy, but I kind of like that um, compared with playing the old Final Fantasy games where you really need to pay attention to your inventory and grinding and stuff like that. Um, this is a nice, it's, it's nice, easy, linear, but it, it's, it's relaxing. That's about the best way I can put this is relaxing. Um, once I finish this, I'm going to want to play Final Fantasy XIII too, so I picked that up as well. And then I uh, picked up Lightning Returns, which is essentially Final Fantasy XIII and III. I already have that on the Xbox 360, but at least now I got two PS3 games that I know for a fact I'm going to play through. And um, honestly, the, the graphics in this game are really impressive. Um, this came out in, what, 2009? Like, 2009 on the PS3, so over 10 years ago, and the graphics look like they could be on a current-gen system, which is really, really nice. So anyway, two more Final Fantasy games for me to add to my collection. Uh, I also picked up uh, this Nintendo 64. So um, this is the Jungle Green Fantastic console, so you can see it's like translucent, you can almost see through it. It's really nice. Um, I've always wanted a Fantastic console. These came in all sorts of different colors. They all were translucent like this. Uh, man, I, I went to my friends' houses all the time growing up. All of them had all the different colors, um, and it was so nice to see. And I wanted one for a while, so I got it. 
and I actually have an ulterior motive. This is my third N64, and um, the other two I have are my gray childhood one, so like the, the original Nintendo 64, and my special edition Pikachu one. I don't want to touch those insides, uh, I don't want to damage them, or potentially damage them, but I do want to get an N64 RGB modded to output a better video, and if you don't know what that is, I could be here all day trying to talk about it, but essentially, the best an N64 video can output gives the quality of about a VHS tape. And I want to be able to modify it to output as good as a DVD. That's about the best way I can put it. So, um, the, the mod is cheap and it looks like it's something that I'll be able to do. So, my goal is to modify this to do RGB output, which I'll probably do in a month or two. It's cheap, it's easy to do. Maybe I'll even make a video showing myself doing it, I don't know. Probably not. Uh, anyway, so I actually wanted to add some Wii U games to my collection as well, and I picked up four of them. And I've mentioned this before, the way the Wii U library works is for every three games, you gain about 2% of the library. So, right here I have over 2% of the library in my hand, it's about 2.5% of the entire Wii U library. Um, so these were all games that I was missing, obviously, and thanks to this, I believe I'm up to 90 games total for the Wii U, which only had 164 games total, so I'm more than halfway there now. Um, the biggest game that I picked up, Devil's Third. Um, this is, for some reason, the most expensive Wii U game in existence right now. Uh, it only got one print at first, but then it got more prints, but I guess that news didn't quite get around. This was, I, I really should have picked this up a year ago when it was only $60. It was, it was more than that when I bought it, but I just needed to buy it. And I forgot to mention, I got a lot of Christmas money, um, so that's why I was able to get all this stuff. Plus, a lot of it I got through eBay auctions instead of buy it now. So, like, the, the N64 I got for about half the price it would normally go for, for example. Um, so this I got for a little cheaper than it goes for, but I still overspent what I would like. But I'd just rather get it now and not have to worry about it. Every Wii U game I'm now missing costs less than 25 bucks. Uh, I also picked up uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and since this got a Switch release, the Wii U release is way cheaper. It's just hard to find the one that's the that's not the Nintendo Selects version, but this is not, so I'm good. Also picked up some games brand new on Amazon to help bump up my shipping over 25 bucks, or my total over 25 bucks so I can get free shipping. Those games were Rumbo Deluxe Edition and Scribblenauts Unmasked. Next, I want to talk about this book that I picked up. This is The Complete Virtual Boy by Jeffrey Wigenhagen. Um, so, uh, he wrote this book uh, a year or two ago, and this is, this is a guide to every single Virtual Boy game ever made. And it may not sound interesting, but that includes things like homebrews and unreleased games and, and hacks and stuff like that. And then contributors um, stuff at the very end. So this was... Uh, this was a Kickstarter campaign, and then um, in the back, maybe the last 50 pages or so, are all stories and um, articles by uh, people who contributed to the Kickstarter. So, uh, why is this interesting to me? One, I actually do have a fascination with the Virtual Boy. It's currently the only Nintendo console I do not own. I need to get one, if it were to get any cheaper. Um, but, more importantly, it's written by the guy who's making a book called The Switch Collector Year One, which is interesting because I'm a contributor for that book. So I decided to pick up this and see sort of uh, what I can expect from his work and how I can better contribute to that book. That book should be coming out in a few months and I do have a copy on reserve, so when it gets here, I'll be happy to review it and show it to you. But in the meantime, I, I picked up this. It was it was on sale and I really, really enjoyed reading it. Uh, it's it's just an incredibly well-made book. I'm surprised that, it, that it's not in Barnes & Noble or anything like that. It's an amazing book. If you have any fascination at all with the Virtual Boy, definitely pick it up. Uh, let's go ahead and actually show off my Switch games. I usually save this for last, but I only have six games right now to show you, so um, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, I only picked up these six games this month, or they just came in this month. Um, so the first one is Flipping Death, which I don't remember if this was a... 
Now, I, I remember, this is this is one of those games that I was able to price match um, and get. Apparently, this is a really fun game. I haven't gotten to play it, though. Uh, this is another one I got to price match. Uh, Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered. Uh, it's rated M. That's about the only thing that really stands out to me. It looks like it's a... a at one point, it was a mobile game and got ported to the Switch. There's a lot of mobile games that are on the Switch these days. I also imported a few games from Europe. Um, so the first one is Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet Complete Edition. And this actually did get a US release, but only on PS4 and Xbox One. I have the PS4 version. Um, why it didn't come out in America on, on the Switch, I don't know. The same thing happened with Hollow Realization, which I also imported from Europe. I don't have many European imports, but I love Sword Art Online, so I, I just felt the need to import that, just to make sure I had physical copies of them in my collection. This game, Schlagd den Star. This is a Germany exclusive game, and why would I get this? because this was the first Switch game I ever skipped. I have a complete year one US set, and I was going for a complete worldwide set, and this is the game that stops me, because it was exclusive to Germany, and it never dropped below 40 bucks, and I was not gonna pay 40 bucks for a game I'm not even gonna play. I, I speak German, so I could play it just fine, but I'm not interested. But, I was talking with other people in the Switch Collectors group, and this game was brought up about how it's shovelware, and I'm like, it's been egging me for all this time, I'm going to go on eBay, see if it's cheaper, it was cheaper, like I said, I got a lot of Christmas money, so I ended up buying it for about 20 Not happy with that price, but finally I have the farthest back Switch game from anywhere in the world that I was missing. The spine is also completely out of whack, too, compared with every other Switch game. So, Slagged and Star is now mine. Uh, okay, we also got a few limited print games in the mail. Uh, we got Ultra Core from Strictly Limited. I ordered this a long time ago. Um, this is a this is a homebrew Genesis game, actually. It's, it's a really hardcore Genesis game. Uh, but you got a Switch... Um, a Switch uh, port, which I'm holding in my hands, and um, yeah, I ordered this last summer or something, and it finally got released, finally got here. I'm super happy about that. The last Switch game I got was Gigantic Army, which is the first game to be released in the United States by VGNY Soft. VGNY standing for Video Games New York. I've actually been there. I went there and that's where I got my copy of Pokemon Red and a few other games. I, When I visited New York in early 2018, um, they've gotten into the limited print business, kind of. This game actually has been limited released in three regions of the world, each of them with a different cover. 5,000 copies total. In North America, there's 1,500. And I got one of them. Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but it was egging at me that this is the most limited Switch game in North America that there is, and I just needed to get it. It, it would have bothered me if I didn't. And to, uh, to help matters, I actually did get a really low number. I got number 53 of 1500. Each of them is individually numbered, and I got number 53. Super happy with that. Uh, I just hate that there's so many limited print companies, and even worse, that the limits are getting smaller and smaller. We've gone from games getting 5,000 to 4,000, 3,000, and now down to just 1,500 copies. I don't like it. I really don't like it. But that's probably just gonna be the future of physical games. And uh, now I'm gonna show this off. So, if any of you are in the Switch collecting scene, you probably know JP Switch Mania. Um, he's been selling a lot of his personal collection on eBay or, or not e on eBay, on Twitter, uh, posting stuff that he has for sale that's not Switch games, and he posted his entire Magnavox Odyssey 2 collection. And I decided to buy it. Uh, we came up with it, uh, honestly, it was a price that was way more fair to me than it was to him. So very, very huge thanks to him for, uh, for, for settling on that price. Uh, let's see, where do I start? I start with this stack. Okay, he ended up sending me 13 unique games total, and there's only 49 games on the Odyssey 2, which means that um, I have over a quarter of the library now. And the Odyssey 2, for those of you who don't know, is 
Essentially, it's an Atari 2600 competitor, which was a system that came out before the original Nintendo and before the Sega Genesis and all that stuff. So these are really old games. But I love them because every single game he gave me is complete in box. So you get to see what the boxes look like and how it opens up and how there's a manual inside. And then the cartridges look like this with a little handle on the top. It's really nice. I don't have an Odyssey 2 system to play them on, but I do have these games now. And this is just absolutely amazing. So thanks to JP for sending me these games. We've got In Order. Armored Encounter and Sub Chase, which is two games on one cartridge. There's going to be a few of those. Uh, baseball. Blackout and Breakdown. Bowling and Basketball. Cosmic Conflict. And I also love how for a lot of these boxes, they have the original price tag still on them. So you can see, uh, for some of them, where they came from, but for a lot of them, how much they cost when they were brand new or when they were discounted. We also have Football, uh, Freedom Fighters, Hockey and Soccer, Casey Munchkin, which is a Pac-Man clone, and one of the most popular games on the Odyssey 2. Monkey Shines. Pickaxe Pete. Speedway and Spin Out and Cryptologic. And UFO. So, yeah, thanks so much to JP for sending me these games. Uh, they're absolutely great, and I love that they're just a little piece of history. These games are older than I am, and... <laughs> Um, it, it's just really nice to look at them and, and just look into... It's like looking into a time capsule. It, it's really, really interesting. Uh, but that wasn't all the games he sent me. He actually sent me 16 games instead of just 13, but three of them were duplicates. So I took those to my retro game store, traded them in for some credit, and used that credit to pick up these games, which is why I didn't show these off yet. And these are the last things to show off in this video. So the games I picked up were... Pong for the PlayStation 1, and Ten Pen Alley for the PlayStation 1. And I've mentioned this before, but whenever I get new disc-based games for the PS1 or the Dreamcast or something like that, I put them into these brand new jewel cases, so man, they really do look like they might have been on the shelf yesterday. They're really, really nice. I also picked up an NES Classic, Battletoads, which is a uh, Konami game, I'm pretty sure. Trade West? Um, I'm almost positive Konami was in charge of this, but I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, this is a classic NES game. Didn't have it before, now I have it. I'm very happy to have it. Really, really fun game. And then, the final game I picked up was PGA Tour 97 for the Sega Saturn. This is only my second Saturn game. A lot of them are really, really expensive, especially the good ones. Um, but this was cheap enough, and I was able to use my credit to get that. So, that wraps up my game pickups for, 2020, uh, for January 2020. Oh man, let me know what your favorite thing was that I got. There's just so much to talk about here. So much that I got. Uh, probably my favorite would be the Pokemon games complete in box, because I just love Pokemon. I talked about that for way long as it is, but I love Pokemon. I always have, I always will. Super happy to have more boxes to add to my collection. I'm down to just five games that I'm missing from the main series. Just so much stuff I got this month. I'm so thankful and very lucky that I've gotten a lot of it. Um, will not happen again. I, I, I blew all my Christmas money. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. Here are my patrons for this month and uh, go watch the Super Bowl or something.